Thank you very much. Indeed, being both a mathematician and member of the Academy of Sciences and a member of Parliament, uh, it was rather natural that I uh, work on such a kind of mission. And let me say that this is part of the uh, policy of the current government and uh, the campaign of the current president to put more experts in the parliament and more experts being not experts of politics but experts of a number of subjects. So I've been in charge of a mission for artificial intelligence which is going on with a dedicated team and uh, which uh, has a very broad mandate about suggesting a policy for France in the large field of AI. Suggesting for France and also do, do suggestions for Europe because soon European Union will also um, uh, craft uh, a policy for AI and uh, this is also in a context in which a number of important evolutions will occur in the regulation such as the GDPR which will occur next year. In the course of this mission, we have two main goals, two, two main questions to answer. One is about the attractivity and the performance of the France and Europe, and the other is about the need for justice and the uh, social link, in general, in applications of AI. And uh, let me also mention that, proud as we are of the development of AI in Europe, we are also aware that we have some uh, deep concerns about the rate of uh, flow of uh, our researchers and engineers in the field outside of Europe, of the rate of the flow from the public sector to the private sector, etc. Myself, I have spent a couple of years of my life teaching in American universities, doing research there and fostering links between private and public. I am not allergic to either of these um, uh, actors, but I believe currently the situation is unbalanced and it's important for the sake of everybody that we strive towards balance again. Now let me say uh, how the situation goes and our main, uh, my main remarks and conclusions so far. First thing, AI is a field which is very much transverse and sectorial. Transverse meaning that you need to input a lot of various points of view and among the maybe 250 people that we will hear in our audition during this mission, there is a very large range, researchers, engineers, uh, entrepreneurs, but also philosophers, uh, people in medicine, in the law, ministers, everybody. And it's a subject in which everybody has their say, and because it's a subject which appeals to everybody, it's important that part of the debate is very much public, and we have also to talk about it and debate about it and explain things. And one of our goals is that our report will not be intended just for a government, but it needs so that uh, the whole uh, society can read about it and ask questions about it. Uh, it's a subject which each sector has to get in touch. I mean, uh, the law has to incorporate AI, the uh, defense sector has to do it, etc., etc. And in each of sectors, you can ask both questions. What, um, how to, let's say, how to uh, use the law to help the AI, how to use the AI to help the law. It goes both ways in each and every sector. Second remark, modern technologies about AI are so very much centered on the use of data that a great deal of the discussion is about the data. Data protection, data regulation, data economy, data regulation, and so forth. It's a complicated topic which involves law issues, but also cultural issues, and also technical issues. Technical being how to store and protect the data, cultural issues being how to convince people to institutions to give their data, for which purpose, and so on. Uh, and uh, what does it mean? Collecting data is an important question, also taking into account the definite will of Europe to put the privacy at a very important uh, stage of every process, very important place. Uh, my uh, next uh, remark is about the issue of uh, human resources. And of course, so far, the race for artificial intelligence is a race for natural intelligence, meaning the intelligence of people who can develop the AI, program it, use it in an intelligent way, etc. And uh, we've seen this race being made also at the, in the economic sector. Uh, right now, in my field of mathematics, the 
um, statisticians are those who are most sought after, those who get the highest offers and so on, because this is the field closest to uh, AI and big data and so forth. So we need also to develop at the level of Europe our special identity with respect to this. For instance, putting together the uh, environment, European environment and uh, uh, social care, which is uh, so much appreciated, but also the possibility of networking from countries in Europe to uh, help attracting our uh, best talents and so forth. Uh, let me say that uh, when it comes to research, there is no much difficulty to hear opinions from the experts and so on. When it comes to economics, it's so complicated and there's a huge range of opinion in the economists which we are hearing from the, the whole range from those who predict that it will be an Armageddon in terms of employment to those who say it will be a, a enormous opportunity of uh, better jobs, more numerous and so on. And debate is not so simple. Yes, we know there is this Schumpeterian theory and those examples like red flag and so on, uh, regulation which was brought up, which shows that uh, there is renewal of technologies and jobs come and go, etc. But there are many scenarios. Could very well occur, for instance, that jobs are destroyed in one continent and recreated in another continent through globalization and global trade and uh, free flow and whatever. And this, on this situation, on this issue, we are very uh, careful. Yes, eight minutes, correct. I still have one minute and 20 seconds. <laughs> and uh, let me do my final, uh, final remark is about um, research. Yes, we heard so much about what AI can do, the new tools, the new, the new wonders, the miracles in the health, in the assistance to disabled people, in the communication, whatever. But also these are research problems which are amazingly interesting and not well known. First, we know that AI has gone through summers and winters over the past decades. Not so far ago, we were in a winter. Now it's a summer. Let's be careful. We don't understand really what did change, except the fact that there's more data and more speed. But nobody uh, expected that it would be such a change. And six years ago, the best experts in the world did not bet one uh, uh, dollar on a deep uh, neural network. And now it's all over the place and everybody says it's the fantastic thing. But we understand so little. And there is a lot of stake in the research to understand more and I think plenty of beautiful things to be discovered. One last remark. When you talk about, when you talk to P experts in uh, neuron, uh, neural development and uh, the brain and so on, they will tell you that much when you are a child as a state of nature and so on, naturally you learn to understand correlations and a lot of education is to put more causality and to help you destroy the, prejudice, the prejudices which you naturally have and destroy some of your certainties. One may argue that we did not start the teaching part yet when it comes to artificial intelligence, but just the natural kind of thinking. We are still in the reflex part and the thinking is a still whole new field which gives me the certainty that uh, models and causality will be back. Thank you.